Good evening and welcome to the October 11, 2016 meeting of the Town of Scarborough Planning Board. Uh, would you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Karen, can you please take the roll? Ms. Saunders? Here. Mr. Bealey? Ms. Auglis? Here. Mr. Fellows? Here. Mr. Mazur? Mr. McGee? Here. Thank you, and let the record show that though we do have a couple of absences and a vacant seat, we do have a quorum, and all will be voting members. Next item is approval of minutes from the September 19, 2016 regular planning board meeting as well as the special planning board meeting that was held on September 26, 2016. I move to approve the minutes. I'll second. We have a second. Any discussion? Yes. I'd like to say how impressed I am with the quality of our minutes. That's it. You're here. Hopefully that makes it into the minutes, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Any further discussion? All in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you. First action item, number four, is John and Stephanie Haddad request a subdivision amendment for lot 34 of Windward Heights subdivision, 42 Woodspell Road, Assessor's Map U48, lot 2434. Jay? Yep, thank you, Mrs. Chair. Uh, this applicant is before the board for an after-the-fact request to amend the previously approved no disturbed buffer. Uh, that was established on lot 34 of the Windward Heights subdivision, also identified as 42 Wood Spell Road. Um, the original no disturbed buffer was established as part of their DEP stormwater permit for the overall Windward Heights subdivision. Um, it, that um, no disturbed buffer is sort of above and beyond the town's standard requirements, and so um, <laughs> the applicant's been working through the DEP amended stormwater permit process and um, we have received a copy of that amended permit so we do have that on file. Um, so with that, as I said, the applicant is seeking to um, reduce their the, the no disturb buffer that was on their property that has been encroached upon by the uh, by mostly built pool at this point. So with that, I turn it back to you, Mr. Chair. Thanks, Jay. And I'll turn over to the applicant if there's anything you'd like to add. Uh, sure, I'll give a brief um, overview. <clears throat> My name is Tom Farmer, landscape architect, and I was called um, in June or so to um, to come out. I was called by the land or the pool construction company to come out and see if if they were within um, the building setback limits. Um, they had a feeling that something just wasn't right. <clears throat> um, when the Haddads bought the property several years ago, they were kind of sold through the realtor that you know, it was already cleared to the existing tree line, which is down here, and their property line is, is here. Um, so they, they actually thought that this was the original buffer. And the, and the buffer, the, the DEP imposed buffer, should have been here, um, pretty close to the house. <coughs> and then the setback, the building envelope, was here. And a pool is considered a structure in Scarborough, um, so it's, it needs to be within the building envelope and uh, obviously um, outside of the buffer. But uh, the pool was already, the hole, the hole was dug, the pool was uh, constructed, the, the concrete pool itself, um, but that, then uh, there was a stop <coughs> until, we, um, until we figured it out. <coughs> I feel bad for these, for all the clients I've ever had. Um, I feel the worst for these because of the summer we've had. It's been, they've been looking at this hole since uh, June. It was, I think they were hoping it was would be done by July 4th, but it's just the permitting process through the DEP and through the town. And because it was a subdivision, um, that's why I'm here. That we, you know, I have to come back and get get it amended and re re-signed by the board and then re-recorded with the Registry of Deeds. So we were able to, um, as Jay said, get the DEP to approve the new buffer um, with some mitigation of planting within the building envelope. We've reduced the building envelope um, to 15 feet off of the property line, which is required in the ordinance. So everything meets. Luckily, it was built in such a way where um, it worked out just barely. But um, it seems to everything seems to fit now. 
um, with this amendment. Um, I think that's really about all I have to offer. Um, the plant they want to start the planting as soon as possible and uh, keep going in the pool and hopefully um, it'll be a Christmas present. <laughs> all right, thank you. Um, before we move to board discussion, we do have the opportunity for public comment on this. If there's anyone who would like to come on up, right, seeing none, we'll turn to the board. <coughs> and uh, Nick, would you like to start off? Do you have anything on this? I don't have anything to add to that. Susan? I have nothing. Thanks. Robin? Uh, are the landowners here? They are not. Um, what? What can we? What can be done to ensure that the 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 no disturb uh, buffer infringement doesn't happen again? Just sort of like a lessons learned sort of type thing, Tom, if you wouldn't mind yeah. letting us know in your professional opinion, because I'm aware that you know probably just about every you know the majority of subdivisions approved have these no disturb buffers. Mm -hmm. So how do we connect those dots? Yeah, that's a great question, and. They would really come down to enforcement, and that enforcement would have been a DEP um, enforcement, and they're stretched so thin at the state level that, um, you know, and their subdivisions approved all over that have these stormwater buffers, and, and unfortunately, or you know, ironically, it was the developer that, that cleared the buffer. Right, right. So, so it was recorded on the plat or the book and deed or, or, or whatever, and, and this new um, buffer is also going to be recorded. That's right. Okay. And the, and the homeowners now know about it. I mean, it was it was an absolute honest. And probably mistake. others in the subdivision probably know about it too, maybe. Yeah. Uh, well. <laughs> I guess that's what I'm trying to get at. Is, you know, is is this a a case study that's worth like letting other communities know that before you go dig in a pool, maybe go go see the town office? Well, they did. Um, they had a plan designed by a landscape company, um, which completely overlooked the ordinance and any of those regulations. Um, and they pulled a permit for the pool. Okay. There's lots of caveats yep. in that permit, on that permit, that say the owners are, res the owners or contractors are responsible for gaining any state <coughs> and local approvals for those types of things, um, or meeting local ordinance standards. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, if the pool, you know, the pool is considered a structure, so only this much of it really, that little seat shape up there is, is that would have been legally allowed. Right, right. Um, so was the, there any mitigation rate that was applied here because the, the, <coughs> the no disturbed buffer was, was in fact disturbed? Did DEP apply any mitigation rate, meaning you need to um, renew the buffer like two to one versus what it was or anything like that, Tom? Um, what happened with that, uh, the stormwater regulations have changed in the last 10 years, and they actually got more lenient. So they lost this about 18 feet. The buffer should have been here. Uh, that's no cut buffer line. Um, and now it's here. So there's a loss of about 18 feet, but it... Um, Sebago Technics were the engineers originally on the subdivision. They took a new look at it. We met with the DEP out there, and they said you can you can apply the new stormwater regulations now instead of the old ones. Um, so we that doesn't happen often. We've gotten we've gotten lucky all along the okay. process, um, especially where they where they put it. I mean, they could have they could have easily put it outside of their property because right. they had no idea where where that was. All they, right. uh, they thought their property was down closer to the stream, which is a, still about another 100 feet away. So there's still a good um, over 100 feet of buffer to the to the stream. Okay. And um, you do have the DEP findings and approval letter in hand. Yes. And that's been presented to staff? That's correct. Okay. Yeah, we, we, we were on the agenda for last month's meeting, but didn't have it. That's all I have, Chair, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I don't really have any questions. Um, I'll just add just to very briefly to get back on that the conversation that um, it really is it really is the responsibility of owners to make sure that they that they affirmatively look to see what restrictions there might be, um, and it's all available there. And we do see this sort of thing from time to time. Um, I'm glad that it was 
we were able to make it compliant and, and get it permitted uh, because if that hadn't been possible, then it really would have gotten uncomfortable. So I'm glad that it seems to be having a, a happy ending. But, you know, I, I, to me, the big lesson learned and lesson sort of reiterated is if you're an owner or a builder or whatever, affirmatively go down to town hall or wherever and look to see what buffers, easements, restrictions there are. Um, and don't just assume that because nobody's knocking on your door that there isn't anything there. So and hire a landscape architect. Right. Okay. Right on. <laughs> um, so I will leave it at that and put forward a motion. Uh, I move to approve the application of John and Stephanie Haddad for an amendment to the Windward Heights subdivision to modify the no disturbed setback on lot 34 as shown on the proposed plan prepared by Sebago Technics dated September 19, 2016 and further described in the materials submitted by Tom Farmer dated August 30th and September 26, 2016. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you. All right. Our next item. Maine Veterinary Medical <laughs> Center requests site plan amendment for 1500 Technology Way, Assessor's Map U39, Lot 4730. Jay? Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <laughs> As you just noted, uh, the applicant is before you for a site plan amendment to uh, previously approved commercial property uh, in the Enterprise Business Park. This is at the end of Technology Way, and it is in the Haigas Parkway Zoning District. Uh, what the applicant is seeking before the board is for the placement of what our ordinance calls a non-temporary use of an accessory storage container. Essentially, they want to put an MRI trailer um, that is an accessory use to the uh, veterinary clinic or hospital on site. And then they're also seeking uh, approval for a parking lot expansion. Uh, it's a slight modification from a parking lot area that was originally approved uh, by the board but not required to be built. Um, so they're looking to do some minor modifications to what was originally approved. Um, as noted in staff comments, this application is required to go through our uh, site plan review ordinance requirements as well as the performance standards for the what I'll call a, a permanent accessory container rather than the <laughs> language our zoning ordinance uses which is long and com complicated. Um, anyway, uh, one of the so in staff comments, one of the uh, the performance standards for the trailers required trailers to be uh, 495 square feet or less, and we just want to confirm that that is indeed the case. Um, there was a little bit of ang ambiguity as to the uh, dimensions of the trailer, um, so we just want to hopefully be able to clarify that. Um, staff also identified that the performance standards in the zoning ordinance and the site plan ordinance. Also seek to ensure that um, uh, trailers or accessory, accessory buildings are well screened and mimic at least to the best of their ability and coordinate with the overall architectural vernacular of the site. So, you know, are there any ways of looking at that? Um, and then in terms of the parking lot expansion, staff had comments with regards to overall landscaping, lighting, and um, some questions regarding the grading um, for, for consideration. And with that, I would turn it back to you. Thanks, Jay, and I will hand it off to the applicant's representative. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Steve Bushy with Stantec here on behalf of uh, Maine uh, Veterinary Medical Center and uh, Dr. Podoff, Alan Podoff, who is responsible for the application, uh, and uh, we assisted him to a certain extent. Uh, our office, uh, going back a number of years ago, had prepared the, the original Lot 30 uh, park plan. In fact, I think Angela may have been uh, involved with it at that time uh, when she worked with uh, DeLuca Hoffman Associates. So uh, Dr. Podoff approached me, he said he needed to have a mobile MRI unit. A unit. He was uh, originally contemplating putting in a brand new MRI unit and uh, due to expense and so forth, inside the building uh, with what he was going to have to go through for renovations to the building decided that perhaps a mobile unit was uh, more feasible for him to, to uh, look at. So he did that and uh, I'm going to show you some pictures of the MRI, MRI unit because I think that will be helpful in uh, addressing a few of the staff comments. 
the location <coughs> of the unit here is the existing building. It's at the very end of Technology Way, uh, pretty well secluded, so to speak, uh, pretty well landscaped, uh, established landscape. I think the construction of the uh, facility was 2006, 2007, 8, no later than 2008. So it's been there for uh, a fairly long period of time. Uh, basic parking lot out in this area here, access on this side of the building. Have a little garden area of sorts over on this side. Piece of mechanical equipment sits outside the building and there are a couple of exit doors here and here on the building, uh, which works out well relative to operations and people having access in and out of this uh, MRI unit, which I'll show you some photographs here in a moment. But positioning the MRI unit uh, was done principally because of that access piece here and what we're planning on doing, since it is a trailer, it would be positioned on a concrete pad area and there would be good access from a door here for be able to step out and step up a set of uh, stairs, detachable stairs that go onto the, the trailer unit and then you step into the, into the uh, unit itself. Uh, I'll show you some photographs that for example, uh, give you how uh, a larger animal, let's say a horse, would be brought into the into the trailer to have an MRI taken on a, a leg, apparently, or something like that. So, I've got some images to that effect. At the same time, uh, Dr. Potoff, as we were doing this, he said, "You know, uh, while I'm going in uh, for this approval, I might as well take the time now to do uh, an expansion of my parking lot because uh, they're a busy business. Uh, I was out there a couple of times now in the last month." Uh, just for you know lunchtime hour even, and uh, their parking lots you know, not 100% full, but uh, at least 80 or 85%. And uh, so he's got a good business going there, and uh, felt compelled to uh, move forward now with the the parking expansion. Jay touched upon the fact that the original approvals did have a parking lot expansion, which is basically this area here uh, that had been previously shown. The parking count would go from, I think it's 56 today, up to 78 was the original approval amount. And we're looking now for basically 74 spaces. We reconfigured this expansion space slightly from what the original approval was, but it's basically still within the footprint area uh, of uh, that original site plan. We're looking at an access that would allow vehicles to circle around, We've got an extension of a sidewalk, here into the parking lot area and to the points of uh, drainage and grading for city uh, town <coughs> staff. We may have to do a few refinements there, but I think those are pretty minor items that we can uh, uh, correct or, or fix as to the drainage. Basically, the site being part of the business park uh, drains into the business park systems, and if you get back at the entrance of Technology Way, there's a fairly sizable uh, stormwater management facility there. So we'll show you how the site fits in to the broader park. So I was just saying, Enterprise Drive and Technology Way, that large pond is right there. So our site's at the very end. Here's the existing building. And I apologize, I'm sure, a little distance here for you to be able to see, but here is the location of the parking lot. And you can see that there will uh, be maintained a reasonable stand of, of existing uh, mature trees, not only on the project site side, but there is uh, within the uh, Downs property as well, and this plan uh, does show where that property boundary is here. Suppose as comparison, looking at this particular property with its existing parking lot and then the proposed parking lot, then looking at, uh, I don't know what each one of these tenants are, uses are, but with respect to where their uh, building and or parking lot are here within the uh, Enterprise Park. Uh, pretty similar circumstances in terms of how close they got to their property boundary and yet still retain, I've driven up and down the downs here, I did that today just to get a sense of what that uh, <coughs> number is. Boy, it's other than through here where the uh, emergency connection is, which is gated, uh, right now the leaves are still up, it's still pretty thick and you can't see much into the enterprise site. And, I believe that that'll be uh, the same type of situation here, uh, even when the new parking lot's installed. So, so these are images. 
don't know exactly uh, the unit that uh, is being proposed. Uh, there, there are multiple vendors out there, so I downloaded these off of the, the Internet, and they seemed, uh, based on the information that Dr. Potoff had provided me as to how these trailers set up with uh, stairs and access, uh, in particular this one was very close to the unit that uh, the information that he would given me. I don't know what vendor who produces this is, but it looked very good in terms of uh, the, the details that he'd given me, so I thought that was uh, was positive. And as I had outlined earlier, here's a photograph as an example of, uh, you know, a large animal being brought into that, that MRI unit. So basically, this will be backed into that space adjacent to the building. The truck goes away, it sets up, and... Uh, there he is now, so he can offer, some, this is Dr. Potoff, uh, the applicant, so he might be able to offer a little bit more information and background, either correct me or tell me uh, uh, differently here as to the unit that's going in, but um, I think that this hopefully is helpful in terms of understanding what it's going to look like. Back to that piece for a moment of uh, location. So here is the west side of the building, and uh, these trees in here, these cars are basically in front of where that unit will be parked. So it's a pretty high stand of trees now, but it's thick all the way over to the, to the downside. And uh, the purpose for this photograph here is just to give you some indication. The parking lot today has, uh, I believe these are LED type fixtures for lighting and uh, I would expect it probably be two more within the, the parking lot area. Uh, here is an image from the Downs driveway looking back into the site, so um, you can't even see the existing building uh, uh, back into the, the, the site there, 100 to 150 feet. So back to the site plan again, uh, so that mobile unit sitting here, it uh, seemed like it was, one, convenient uh, to the building because they do need a fairly high uh, electrical service, and that will be coming out this <laughs> side of the building. Uh, but as far as I understand, there are no other utilities that go into the building other than the power piece. And again, it is a, a unit that uh, the folks who are using that unit are really uh, their office spaces inside the, the prime building. They step in and out into the, the MRI unit, as best I can tell. So. With that, I would uh, entertain any questions and or perhaps Dr. Potoff can uh, offer any more uh, about uh, the project. Thank you. Susan? I'm just curious, having seen the photos, how do you get a horse in there? No, you got to go to the podium. Go on up to the you mic there, please. The <laughs> Thank you. I can't imagine how you do that from what I've just seen. But that, uh, that would not be our facility. Oh, okay. Our, our facility is, is pets. You, you, yours is pets, so you're not going to have horses there? No. Okay. That's what I needed to know. I mean, the whole but setup but makes sense to that, me, but then there was like these stairs and a horse. I couldn't quite see that. Okay. Thank you. I, that, I really think it's fine. I thank you for you. <coughs> Good. Robin? Yeah. Um, so Jay, you had mentioned that we need to ensure that the trail that whatever trailer is less than 495 square feet. Correct. That's a that's a zoning standard that yep. the board doesn't right. have any. And, and these trailers are 48 feet by 8 feet. 48 by 8. So, okay. And how do we, you know, and we have to make sure that they're well screened or mimic the background around the, them. The site the the site plan, um, the performance and the site plan standards. Yeah, they call for them to be screened from okay. abutting properties mm -hmm. and roadways. Okay. Um, so that's... Got that's it. So the trailer being there with the rest of the building kind of mm -hmm. a thing is, is yep. appropriate. Yep. Okay. So, yes, yeah, really the question that staff have for the board to really consider is what it... Because we didn't have the information about what that existing stand of trees was. Mm -hmm. I, I certainly had an idea, but okay. it's up to the board to determine if that's adequate or not. So okay. I wanted to be sure that that was at least looked at and thought about. Sounds good. And then... Um, the lighting, are these cut-off lighting fixtures that are there? Yes, those LEDs are new fixtures. Okay. Uh, that, meet, cut off. that meet the town ordinance requirement. Yeah. I'm done. That's all I have for questions. 
I'm Let's sorry, see. I forgot. Um, Thanks, Robin. I did make a note about the question that staff had about considering the feasibility of putting an apron around the base of the trailer to minimize the view of the wheels, etc. I mean, it's going to be in the, the back of the building, am I right? That's correct. That, that is correct, and, and it is the furthest lot uh, from that uh, technology way. So, so in order to see it, you'd have to come into our parking lot, go towards the back, and then look over it, and then you could spot it. Okay. If anywhere else, I don't think it's visible. Thank you. Thank you. Nick? Is it, is it your intention to, this is permanent, essentially, correct? You're not going to actually down the road put but the that, MRI machine well, back in the facility? I am leaving that open to a, to a degree in the sense that we currently do have an MRI that is within this area right here. It's a room uh, that has an MRI. It's a, it's a it's called a permanent magnet, so it doesn't have the liquid helium cooling it. It's, it's, it's smaller uh, in size. And uh, when we looked at feasibility for um, swapping out that unit for uh, a 1.5 Tesla machine, uh, Wright Ryan, in their first pass-through came back with an estimate of about 400000 to uh, upgrade that room, which seemed crazy to me. But it, uh, um, so, so we're, and plus there was going to be like two months of downtime, so we'd have to get rid of the one unit and then they would do the construction and then put in another unit. And this way, uh, if we do do that down the road, it's, it can be seamless in the sense that uh, we could be using the trailer while they're doing construction and, and then once that unit's in, move the trailer out. And so that's, it's unlikely I'm going to go that route, but it, uh, that is still an option. I'm not going to take apart the MRI room that we currently have except to move the current machine out and uh, probably turn it into a surgery room temporarily or permanently. So the reason I was asking was, um, and I, I don't necessarily have a strong feeling one way or the other on this, but the longer it's there, the more I lean towards having to do some sort of shading of of the bottom, whether it's through an apron or maybe a couple of shrubs or something. Right. If it's a, if it's a more permanent fixture, I think you've you got to make an effort to help it blend in to sure. your, your surroundings a little. So that that's the way I would lean on that. I like I said though, I don't really have a, a very strong opinion on it one way or the other, given its location on the on the lot. So um, other than that, I really don't have other questions. I just think the board should consider the the length that, that mm -hmm. this might be in in position. Thanks, Nick. Um, will this will this trailer have any of its own uh, like restroom facilities or other kind of waste disposal facilities, or is it no? It's no, just it's all it, that would be yeah, in the main no building. No restrooms in these things. Okay. It has uh, an equipment room, uh, the uh, operators' room, and then the MRI. Uh, room itself, and that's that's pretty much it. Okay. Um, yeah, I generally agree with my my fellow board members on this. I don't have any major concerns given the given the location there at the end of the road and the sort of the positioning of it and the it's truly a you know, an appropriate accessory use there. Um, I agree with Mr. McGee that um, you know I guess I would strongly encourage you to consider doing some additional screening, whether it's a little bit of landscaping or whatever it is, if, it, if this does turn out to be more of sort of a permanent um, setup, so to speak. Um, but beyond that, I don't really have any uh, strong feelings on it. Susan, did you have something We did else? not touch on number seven from our uh, staff comments about the stormwater narrative. It states that the impervious surfaces on the site will be collected and discharged. So, in other words, is there going to be any impact? Is that essentially what this says? 
going to be any impact to the um, stormwater management of the fact that you're taking up this space for this um, instrument as opposed to just leaving that impervious surface as it is? Yes? I think you can speak to Steve. I had uh, responded or uh, provided information in the original application about the uh, percentages for both landscaping and impervious relative to what was originally approved for the business park and what was on the site. Uh, so with what's been constructed to date, we're not even 50% of what was okay. originally approved. And there will be an increase now with uh, this parking, but that had been factored in on the original the approvals. Original. And we're still below uh, probably by 80% of what the original approvals were for this lot development as part of the, the business part. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Glad we were able to confirm that. Do you have something, Jay? Um, yes. Yeah, just for for point of clarification, and uh, it, you know, should the board start thinking about um, utilizing the draft motion staff as prepared, um, just ask the board to sort of think about um, what we tried to do or what I tried to do in drafting the memo is just lay out sort of the the items that were raised in staff comments, not knowing what the answers would be and how what the board's satisfaction would be. So if screening of the trailer isn't a significant issue, you might think about scratching that item. Um, then I guess same with sort of architectural detailing. I hear the board sort of asking for some tip of the hat type stuff, but maybe not necessarily acquiring it, or maybe so, but just thinking about how you want to position the condition um, to help provide direction should we get there tonight. Um, I guess the other item I'd like to hear a little bit more discussion around is um, staff had identified the um, trying to understand what some of the details around the, the islands and the parking fields were going to be. Will those be sort of landscaped islands? Or are they going to be just sort of uh, pavement asphalt? What, what the intention is and um, if we could just sort of understand what the applicant's expectation are. If the board satisfied with that, that's fine. <coughs> or, uh, again, helping to position um, the applicant moving forward. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Jay. Um, yeah, I think, I think it would be worth hearing from the applicant on the, um, the potential for landscaping in the, the expanded parking field. Could you speak to that a little bit? <laughs> uh, back to the images here. So this area here is the center island in the, in the parking lot here. So you can get a sense of they planted a lot of landscaping when the project was originally constructed, and uh, it has uh, done very well. There are a lot of good-looking trees and, and so forth around the perimeter. Now, this area in here where the MRI is going, uh, they had planted quite a few trees and shrubs and so forth, and those are going to have to get displaced. And what we had talked about was the idea that some of that would go on the outside perimeter here because it's plant material that could get salvaged uh, reasonably enough and uh, use it, uh, uh, at least along these edges. Not that it does a whole heck of a lot given the intensity and depth of existing trees that are there, but rather than waste it, uh, mm. uh, we talked about the idea of replanting it. Now to the staff's concern, I think which is the two, these two islands, they are somewhat narrow, and frankly I had not put anything in these islands in terms of landscaping pieces, but uh, it wouldn't seem to me that it would be a, a big stretch to be able to put in uh, perhaps a couple of uh, the shrubs and plantings uh, that they're going to be taking out of this zone and putting those into those two areas. As like I said earlier, the, this landscaped island here is uh, that. It, it's got a lot of nice trees and heavy vegetation. I think they've done a really good job all around uh, the site, particularly in the, in the front. If you come down Technology Way, you're looking at this building and you're really looking at a bunch right. of mature maples and, and deciduous trees and they've got some uh, evergreens uh, uh, planted here over on this side. There's a couple of nice big pine trees. This is a very large tree that was saved in this little island area. So, um, you know, it felt 
fairly comfortable that at the end of the day they're going to do what's right relative to the, the plant material that's out there because they've done such a good job with it today. So. Susan? As a landscape lady on the board, I didn't ask that question because I went out and looked and there is really wonderful landscaping there. And this is going to go behind and invisible to anything that already exists. So I don't really have any questions about needing any additional landscaping. Just my opinion, that's all. Thanks, Susan. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so the material that's getting displaced will be transplanted along the, the corner of the parking lot there. Um, so, and what I'm hearing too <coughs> is that some of that transplanted material will also make its way into the earthen islands in the parking lot. So, will it be? It'll be curbed, and and I'm sorry, I put the plan set away already. So, it'll be curbed, and inside there will be soil that will also have some of the transplanted material Correct. from putting the trailer in there. How does does anybody else want to talk about? the landscaping before I move on and ask questions about the nope. architectural detailing <laughs> or the screening of the trailer? Uh, no. Okay. <coughs> so how do you propose to screen the trailer then? Or what, what would you do if, if, uh, the, if, if uh, you know, like, like Jay had said, I'm, we're hearing that like at least some tip of the hat, if it is going to be a permanent structure, um, what what do you have in mind? Have you thought at all? Have you brainstormed at all about this? Because I think staff had maybe made you aware of it, Steve. Okay. So had you had any conversations about what might be possibilities? Um, not partic not in any great detail. Um, we have a number of. Uh, I don't know if you, if you have driven up there. You'll see, you'll see that we have um, some banners. Hang up banner hanging from uh, the front of the building that's a vinyl. I could see taking some of those along that trailer. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a few uh, different characters and the advertising and I yeah. creating some banners that could... Yeah. Or a mural art contest in the school. <laughs> just saying. No. Um, I, I guess I was just... So you're not thinking about necessarily like lattice or earthen berms or landscaping or shrubs or anything like that. So you're thinking about signs to somehow screen sort of like the, the advertisement for what is the MRI company kind of a thing. That's what you're thinking. Yeah, and, and then as far as the, the lower part, I, I was starting to look online to see yep. what they have for security yep. for, for uh, large. I, I, we hadn't come up with anything yet. Okay. But that is, I'm trying to search that out. Yeah. Jay, what is the? Do you have the? You, do you happen to have the ordinance right there? Uh, I certainly can. Yes. Um, so, are you referring to the site plan regulations or the performance standards? Um, when you talked about the it being well screened and mimic the surroundings. Yep. So let's see. Um, bu 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 Path transmission towers, accessory containers. Let's see. So this is uh, from the performance standards in the zoning ordinance. Um, <coughs> it talks about all accessory storage containers shall be screened by the use of fencing, walls, berms, plantings, natural vegetation or other buildings and structures on the lot so that the accessory stori storage containers are substantially hidden from abutting properties and public way. Okay, so if, if Steve, could you pull that, that, yeah, that one up again there? Yes, please. And so there's, there's, no, there's no plans to, to necessarily have reroute traffic to go into Downs Road. Do you see what I'm saying? So, so basically when a car pulls down, um, into your driveway, they're going to see your beautiful landscaping, like Susan said, and they're hardly going to see the trailer at all. But what I'm saying is, if access, say Scarborough Downs gets developed or something like that, and it accesses suddenly from the other end, that road gets extended, will it be visible? Okay. 
this yeah. is the existing buffer area that will will be there, and that's going to extend some. I'm going to guess about 80 feet. Pretty heavy. And and is that buff in that buffer has covenants or some type of deed restriction on it too, Steve, so that we don't have. On the downside, I couldn't say anything okay. to what's on there. Okay. Sure. I'm all set. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think those are those are definitely questions worth asking. I, I guess where I come down on it is that, as you were sort of leading to just now, Robin, um, as as the site's configured and as things are oriented now and, and what's being proposed and thinking about what Jay just read, um, there's really no direct exposure to a butters or a public way per se. And I think it's good to be thinking about future potential connections, but you know we can't really hold the applicant right now to something that might happen down the road, um, literally and figuratively. So um, I don't know that I'm hearing sort of collectively from the board that folks feel that this rises to the level of a, you know, a specific concrete condition mm -hmm. yeah. in terms of additional detailing or screening. Um, so obviously, feel free to speak up if anyone disagrees. Um, so just sort of looking at the at this draft motion, um, I think it's I think it makes sense to I would suggest we strike the the section that talks about architectural detailing, leave in parking lot landscaping since we that has been a discussion. It sounds like the applicant is already kind of moving in that direction of sort of relocating some of those some of that vegetation to the periphery of the site as well as to the islands. And um, we, you know, screening screening should certainly be in there. So I guess to me, just the language around architectural detailing would would not be relevant or applicable here. Mm -hmm. um, I think that seems appropriate too. Okay. Just in terms of sort of the screening, is mm -hmm. is there anything additional the board would like to see done in terms of screening? If not, I think you could take out the screening, the trailer from the condition as well, because what they propose because it's the already it's already suspend. part and parcel of the application. Sure. So that existing no, landscaping, yeah. its location. So I'm not hearing anything from the yeah, board. Yeah, Jay, I think I'd just like to add that you know because it is a mobile trailer, that is assuming that the mobile trailer stays in the place as proposed. It's not moved. Correct. So is that implicit in for a for an accessory? It is. So okay. so again, um, yeah. the reason why this is before you are, are again, it's called a what's the terminology? The non temporary use of an accessory storage container. Essentially any of these trailers that are going to be located any more than I think it's either thirty or sixty days, I can look it up, um, is required to go through site plan approval and yes, it's essentially an accessory building at that point. Okay. Um, I would like to just point out that if you go to the um, post office and you exit going north and you go around the back of whatever that building is that does MRIs, they had a pad there upon which they put a temporary MRI and they put in some shrubs and it was inadequate but, you know, it was an attempt to buffer and then they took it away and never came back in the meantime we got a pad and a buffer for nothing so I'm not sure which is better which is better I mean it's sort of like this is the back of a building in an incredibly beautiful area it's no one's going to see it the parking area is already buffered there's all kinds of landscaping I just don't see that there's any kind of a problem I agree Thank you. Uh, so with that, I move to approve the application of Maine Veterinary Medical Center for a site plan amendment to the property located at 1500 Technology Way. The site plan amendment, as shown on the plan prepared by Stantec, dated September 20th, 2016, and further described in the application materials, enables the addition of a permanent accessory storage container for the use of an MRI machine and the expansion of the existing parking field. The application is approved with the condition that the plans are revised to reflect the proposed changes described by the applicant during the deliberation. Plan set and materials are to be revised to address all comments in staff's memo, including parking lot landscaping, 
lighting, grading, and detailing. Final review and approval of materials may be completed by Planning Department staff. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you. Good luck. Good board. Item number six. Matthew Chamberlain requests final subdivision approval for 216 Pine Point Road, Assessor's Map U25, Lot 3. Jay? Yep, thank you, Mr. Chair. As noted, this is uh, applications before you for final review. Um, that means this application had been before you. It was back in the spring that the applicant received preliminary subdivision review in which a lot of the uh, major issues and, and design criteria were considered. Uh, just for way of background, this is a residential subdivision within the R2 district with direct access off of Pine Point Road. Um, staff has provided comments, um, notably some detailing around the, uh, the work that will be done within the Pine Point right away that we want to be sure are done um, adequately and appropriately. Um, and outside of that, staff has prepared a draft motion for the board to consider, and um, I turn it back to you. Thanks, Jay. And I'll turn it over to the applicant. Hi, Matthew yes. Chamberlain. Uh, going through um, the staff notes uh, that Jay's provided, um, we weren't able to create a, a new plan to bring tonight, um, just from uh, technical issues that the engineer had. Uh, but uh, simply put, uh, the five items noted uh, have all been addressed. Uh, the information that um, engineering has provided my engineer uh, has been taken care of. The uh, minor changes to the plan, just a couple of typos have been resolved. Um, not, not much to add. All right. Thank you. And we will turn to the board. Uh, Robin, would you like to start off on this one? <coughs> sure. I just have a question um, on the um, previous staff comments that were submitted in the package for April 4th, 2016. Um, all of those were already previously addressed with staff as well. Correct. There's nothing outstanding. And I just want to confirm with Jay and Angela, there's nothing outstanding from the um, the previous staff comments either. Everything's addressed. Um, I'm satisfied. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we met with um, engineer Paul Gadboys too. Okay. I met um, or talked to him a few times. So okay. I think we got to that point and then there were just a few leftover okay. I'm all set. I don't have anything. Okay. Thanks. Susan? Um, I, I'm a little confused in terms of the mapping, but I think it's just because I haven't been feeling well the past couple of days. But the fact that staff Angela doesn't have any questions about this. Makes me feel a whole lot better. And the staff comments sound as if um, it's all been noted and approached, um, delineated. I guess I don't have any questions. Okay. Thank you. Nick? I'm all set. Okay. Thank you. Um, I don't think I have anything either. Yes. Just sort of oh, good job. <laughs> we, like we like this. I don't want to be the weak link here. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, it looks like everything's been addressed, and I appreciate that. And uh, we'll, we'll we'll make all the technical changes to the okay. plan, create right. the mylar, right. of course, bring it in for uh, right. And we have obviously confidence in staff to work with you to I make sure that all that. comes together. Uh, so we do have a motion here. I move to approve the application of Matthew Chamberlain plans prepared by Ross Boundary Surveyors and Paul Gadboys under the provisions of the Town of Scarborough Zoning Ordinance and subdivision ordinance for the final subdivision plan of Pine Point Heights subdivision with the following findings and conditions. Findings as stated, I will not read that. Uh, the conditions are number one, prior to the release of the attested final subdivision plan to the applicant for recording at the Cumberland County Registry of Deeds, the applicant shall A, pay the required traffic impact fee of $1,402, B, provide draft deed language related to the shared driveway for lots two and three for review by the town. 
C, provide revised detail plans prepared by Paul Gadboys addressing the, the comments in staff's memo, final plans to be reviewed by the planning department staff. Number two, prior to the issuance of a building permit for lot two or lot three, a detailed site grading plan shall be submitted for the applicable lot. Grading plans to be reviewed and approved by the town engineer. And the final condition, number three, Prior to the start of work within the Pine Point Road right-of-way, the applicant is to secure a road opening permit from the Department of Public Works. Yep. That's the motion. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Item number seven, Commercial Place LLC requests a site inventory and analysis phase for Enterprise Drive, Assessor's Map U39, Lot 47-1 through 36. Jay? Yep, thank you, Mr. Chair. As you just noted, uh, the applicant is before you as really this is the first step in a plan development review process for a mixed-use development within the Haigas Parkway District. Uh, the applicant is seeking to amend the previously approved Enterprise Business Park by introducing residential uses into a as of yet undeveloped phase of the development. Um, so the reason this is going before a plan development review process is that introduction of the residential use. That the Haigas Parkway does allow residential activity provided, as I already stated, as part of a plan development review process. Just by way of overview, the plan development review process is a three-step process that's sort of taken sequentially. So this applicant will be before you multiple times. Um, this is that first step. First step is a site inventory analysis opportunity to really take a look at the natural, cultural, uh, natural and cultural, cultural <laughs> characteristics <laughs> of the site, as well as the existing built environment, to try to see what areas are appropriate for development, which areas should be identified per, for preservation and the like. Then the next step will be the development of a master plan, which um, is the conceptual plan that shows sort of the development pattern. And then we get into the very specific subdivision and or site plan process. So again, taking a step back, we're only at the site inventory phase tonight. Um, one of the interesting things about this project, as I noted, this uh, the property in question is part of the previously approved commercial subdivision, um, the Enterprise Business Park, that went through a lot of these sort of review processes back in the early 2000s, um, going through its initial subdivision review process. As part of that, one of the early conversations staff had with the applicant is one of the requirements is that as part of site inventory and application, they have IFNW and Maine Historic Preservation provide comments at this step. Um, the applicant is working through those processes as we understand it right now, um, but sort of want to start the ball moving. Staff felt that that seemed like a reasonable approach given that those reviews had occurred about 10, 13, 14, 15 years ago. Um, but we did set the understanding that um, we will require those to be submitted prior, prior to or as part of the master plan phase. Okay. So we will at least get revised pl comments from those outfits and if anything comes up from that then we may have to reconsider what happened but um, it seems reasonable um, to move forward in that light and so hopefully the board agrees with staff's assessment mm -hmm. on that. Um, so again in terms of the site inventory analysis plan it's really taking a look at those natural and cultural areas that are um, features on the property and staff comments you know again Get, understand the history of the property. Just a couple of items to note is the existing stream that goes through the Enterprise Business Park and any considerations thereof. Um, and then again, uh, just a few small wetland fingers that might be associated with great bigger uh, wetland um, uh, features that might be uh, identified for preservation. Um, those are really the sort of main elements we identify as part of site inventory. Our staff comments went to a number of other items that really become more master plan items, but we thought are at least worth starting the discussion around or, or having part of the public um, uh, record in terms of uh, interconnections with other properties. I think we had just saw uh, uh, another project or another parcel in this development um, 
and it, how it abuts the Scarborough Downs and any potential redevelopment of that large parcel um, should be uh, strongly considered. Um, so I guess with that, I'll turn it back to you, Mr. Chair. And, um, Thanks, Jay. See where we go. And I will welcome anyone from the applicants team that would like to come up and take a brief presentation and sort of an overview of the uh, site inventory here. I'm David Miley. Um, I've been part of Commercial Place LLC and the Enterprise Business Park for many, many years as we have worked to try to build out the park. Um, as you may know, it's uh, if you look at the lots here, it's permanent. It's permanent for 36 lots. It naturally divides into two pieces, and we are. Uh, uh, you know, when we hit 2009, we sort of hit a wall. We haven't had really any development in the park, hardly any since then. We did build nine buildings on one side, and there are 17 lots on that side. So in the last five or so years, we haven't built any. So we got to, uh, uh, just to give you a little background, I mean, we got to thinking about what we were going to do. It's taking a long time to build it out. It, it was losing maybe momentum. We weren't, uh, there was no activity in terms of new building. And so we got to thinking about uh, what we might do to continue the process of developing it out. And we sort of uh, uh, hired Bolas to look at uh, the Bolas company to look at the market and came to uh, the multifamily, the need for multifamily. In fact, um, the Bolas number was a, a demand for 5,000 units in the greater Portland area. And as we all know, rents have been rising and so on. So we, um, when we built the park, it's, it's a high quality park. It's, um, it's, in, uh, it's a suburban park, so it's green, it's, uh, environmentally friendly. We have some running trails, walking trails, some park benches. We have the stream through there. And it's really a beautiful place to work. And um, in, the, in keeping with that, we wanted to try to keep something like that moving forward as we would enter another phase. It has a, a natural road that will cross the stream that's approved. <coughs> And um, we, uh, in looking at the issue, the economic issue as much as anything else, came to this um, solution, if you like, of a multifamily development. Um, but to do it, uh, the, the, the scale at which it would be required to make it sort of economic in terms of the cost of development, when we did our study with C.B. Richard Ellis, um, we figured it was bigger really than certainly something I wanted to do. And so we reached out to look for qualified partners, capable partners, people with experience, people who have done multifamily, people who had a high reputation and had the financial ability to deliver it. And uh, we have a partner in the Newman Development Corporation. I, I think there may be some information that may have been submitted on Newman. Um, and their work is first class and uh, will deliver a quality project. So, you know, we. We, we worked hard over a lot of years to make this a, a, a really nice park and um, want to continue, obviously, to deliver something in that, in that way. Um, so, you know, for us also and for the people who occupy buildings who made the investment there, including, by the way, the town and the business owners and the other property owners, we, we wanted to make sure that we build out the park, that we fulfill the potential that we sort of started out to try to do. And so we've, we, we uh, feel that with the market demand the way it is today, with the need for more housing, uh, that we feel that we've come up with, um, with a pretty, uh, pretty uh, really excellent uh, solution. So um, the, the uh, planning that has gone into it meets all of the compliance in terms of the permitting that has already been done by the DOP, DEP originally for the project. And, um, uh, our, our plan, as we envisage it, complies with all existing zoning and regulations, no requirement for variations in regard to that. And the next step for us would be this master plan. Um, so, um, you know, one of the things we, w that I will mention that we looked at in the beginning was, uh, was the, 
the tax benefit to the town. We, we, when we originally permitted this, we originally got this project, we had a, a TIF, a tax increment uh, credit enhancement plan for the park. And um, uh, in keeping with that, um, we had a, a goal, uh, really, at the time to build out a tax base of, I think it was $50 million. And clearly, with the lack of, uh, you know, with the market the way it is, we've fallen short at, in current build out of what we have. But this multifamily alone would add a $60 million uh, valuation to the, to the base. And sort of, you know, we see it as a way to sort of see the vision and put us back on track. And, and uh, the, I, I think the units, uh, there's a lot of one bedroom <coughs> units and two bedroom units. And we, we believe it will have a, if you like, a smaller impact on services, schools, fire, and so forth as, as we, as we uh, work to build it out. So with that, I, if there are, I don't know what the procedure here is, if there are technical questions or if there are any questions, uh, maybe we'll take those. I have uh, Jason Vafiades yeah. yeah. <laughs> with me from Stantec who, who provided the information that you're looking at and also Blaine Buck who's been from Corgi Capital Partners who, who's been helping us with this project here this evening. Um, okay. If you, uh, I guess the way I'd prefer to proceed, which is what we've generally done on these, is if, if you have something you've prepared that, that you, something else you've prepared that you'd like to, to walk us through, we'll go ahead and hear all that at once and then we'll sort of take questions all together. Um, but if that's, if that's all well, the we're sort at of the site inventory phase, not really at the master planning phase. Right. So we could give you some more detail, but mm -hmm. we're working through it if, if you wanted some more. Um, I think this will show you uh, project the way it's phased. The it excuse me. Did you just put that up there yeah, so sure. we can all see it? Yeah, we certainly don't need to to get into the weeds, and it is no, a multi-step process, so I don't think you yeah, need to well, get into a lot more detail so right is, now. This is the commercial side, and this will be the multi family side. Okay. And the stream divides the two, and the trail goes around both sides of the stream. Okay. So I don't think we have much more to do we? No. You just come up and introduce yourself, and... Be happy to hear from you. Sure. My name is Blaine Buck from Capital, uh, Courts Capital Projects Group. Um, so uh, what we can offer is we've been working for the last four months with uh, Newman Development, which is a developer from the Mid-Atlantic who has uh, produced a number of successful um, residential developments. And we have a plan that we, we could share with you if you wished for us to share with you um, okay. where the development, the sort of the thought process we were looking at. We would appreciate any feedback or guidance that, that we may get from that. I think it, I th I, it's, it's fairly difficult to sort of sort of get to the point where you know this is the this is the west side this is the east side this is the uh, it's all permitted for commercial but we're looking uh, essentially up on these lots up here so if you'd like we, we could present that drawing also um, I think a, just a very brief overview of that okay. could be would be helpful sure. Sure, just swing the mic There's around. There's a handheld mic. There's a handheld mic, hand mic as well. Yeah. And on the bottom, you'll need to turn it on, on the mic one. So all of our TV, all viewers, the way all of our TV viewers can... Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> we will learn this over okay. time. All right. Thank you. So, so this, is, this gives you a sort of a general indication. This is the lower you know, part of the existing uh, commercial uh, subdivision that's been approved and, uh, and built out. Essentially, these drives here have been built out and... Um, and there's a number of uh, structures that have been constructed. Um, this upper piece here is part of the 36, uh, 36 lot subdivision. So the intent would be <coughs> to, to continue to uh, construct the infrastructure pursuant to the uh, regulatory uh, permits for the DEP to the court as well as the town, with a couple slight, slight, uh, slight improvements. Um, the existing public stack actually came all the way to this point. We would like to take and bring it back. And the reason is, is because and we were we were chatting with Jay and Dan, and because the lot was permitted in 2002 and three, we thought it made sense to actually go back and look at the wetlands again. And so we sent the original wetland uh, scientists out, and we found that <coughs> that the the small fingers of wetland actually appear now. 
So we have taken this a little bit further um, with the site analysis um, phase um, into the master planning phase and tried to look at a little bit of minimization. Um, the developer would like to <coughs> would like to construct a clubhouse um, down at this end, if you will, much like most residential developments. And then they, they have they have taken and spread out on the site um, 10, 10 buildings. And the buildings each have 33, 33 units in them. So there'd be 330 um, uh, uh, residential apartment units with a mix of one bedroom and two bedroom units you know, throughout, the, throughout the site that would be phased um, through construction over, over a period of time. That's just about the high, above the high level we Okay, no, that's, that's the definitely. <coughs> <coughs> Thank you. Uh, we do have the opportunity for public comment on this, uh, understanding again that this is really just the very first step in a multi-step process. Um, and we're, we're starting at sort of a high general level here, but if anyone does have anything they'd like to come up and share, this is an opportunity for that. Seeing none, we'll uh, go to the board. And Nick, do you have anything? Yes. <laughs> All right. Um, Jay. I'm going to ask you to help my memory here. When I was mm -hmm. reading through the materials, and I, I failed to print it, them all out, was this the one that had a couple of lots that were had uh, some of the parcels had been touching the wetlands, and the wetlands had come onto the parcels? Is this this great project I'm thinking of? Yep. There's a couple of wetland fingers on the back sides of lots uh, seven and fifteen. Um, And again, it, staff recognizes that, you know, sort of we're at the bubble diagram stage, um, and these are pretty small areas, but just <coughs> sort of noting that, you know, as and if we move into the master plan development phase, that maybe these are areas that um, get a little more attention. Um, but, so. And I'm sure mm -hmm. we've probably had the conversation in, in the past, the board has attempted to do its best to keep wetland pieces off of private property. And um, I think that going forward, take note of that. And we certainly understand uh, there are always exceptions, but as a rule of thumb, it's not a bad practice. Um, the other question I had related to this very old letter. <laughs> <laughs> How old is that letter? Yeah. 2003. Whoa, it is old. It is old. Um, and I, I'm just curious. They. It's from the Maine Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife, mm -hmm. and they had recommended, I don't think they required, but they probably strongly urged a 100-foot undisturbed buffer along any side of the streams. And I'm wondering if your new information regarding the wetlands, might this might have an impact. And I know you're going to go back through the process and discuss this with them, but any any thoughts as to what may or may not change from what we've seen here over the 13 years that have gone by. Okay. Yeah, thanks, Nick. Good point. Uh, Jason Baffiatis, uh, uh, Scantec. Um, we do, so the, tip, the thing with the, the stream setbacks is typically M, MDIFW asks for 100 feet, and I think DEP's typical rule is 75 feet. When you get to site law, MDIFW has the ability to ask for that extra 100 feet. Um, I think in the master plan phase, we'll certainly look at that again and see, you know, where it makes sense. Certainly we do it. Um, there might be a situation where we give it in a whole lot of the area, and then we might have to come in a little bit, but that's all That's all stuff that will be kind of ironed out as we go along to the next phase. Okay. Outside of that, I don't have a lot of comments at this point. Thank you. Thanks, Nick. Susan? Um. This is the easiest part of this process. From here on, it gets more and more complicated. Um, but I would like to just, because we're on camera, to go through just a few of the issues that were brought up by staff at this point, which is the site inventory and analysis. Um, 
it is interesting to take to, to make note of the fact that because we're changing the use of this overall plan, the right in and right out access onto Route 1 is something that needs to be taken a look at. I'm sure that you know that and we know that, but let's go public with it. Um, you just mentioned the difference between the 75 and the 100 foot. Um, I'm a little confused, and I don't need to have it explained to me because I know it will be explained to me in time, but this concept that um, the anticipated development of the commercial lots proposed was 20,000, and then mm -hmm. in July it turned to 26,250, and in September it turned to 26,800, and that's important because the amount of the development that's going to be business, if you will, or commercial, will dictate how much residential you get to have. So is that something that you know we're going to be looking at really closely? And you don't have to answer me. I'm just saying that this is something that is, to me, is, is really large. Um, um, what was the other one I had here? Oh, um, I'm a little confused myself. If you're not confused, you're a lot better informed than I am. But when preparing the master, number five, when preparing the master plan sub submission, you need to include responses addressing the applicable additional development standards contained within the highest parkway district provisions. Hello, staff. Hi. What does that mean? In the highest, in the zoning ordinance, the highest parkway district for projects that are going through the plan development process, mm -hmm. there are design standards they need to meet. Okay. And so what this is asking is for the applicant to basically provide a narrative that points to the board and staff how they're addressing them. Um, it, it makes a much more efficient review process, we find, for board members. Um, okay. So you can sort of say, okay, we're being asked for streetscaping. What are they doing? We're go. being asked for I was hoping design going, standards. I hope how are we were doing to say it, that so. because that was the one piece that wasn't addressed clearly in here is what do we have for design standards and what do we have for street standards and what do we have for sidewalk standards and all that kind of stuff because this was not part of the initial um, acceptance of this property and it looks like it's been taken care of. I mean, it's been requested of you in a way that's in the ordinance and that makes me feel a whole lot better. Um, I think that basically I'm... Let me just say I'm excited about this concept. I really am. I have not been worried about you as people, but I've been worried about the project because it's such a great spot, and the plan was great, but times change. And if there's anything we need, it's multifamily housing in Scarborough. And this is an opportunity to provide that, and I'm really very excited about that, and I think we can work well with you. So thank you. Thanks, Susan. Thanks, Susan. Robin? Um, let's see. Um, I guess I want to start with wetlands and talk about, um, I'm, I'm happy to hear that they were reassessed or reevaluated after, you know, 12 or 13 years had passed kind of thing. Um, we've, in that time, we've also had some very, um, some very controversial rules around significant vernal pools that have come about. Have those been assessed? If not, let's let's put it on the table and talk about that. Because here we are at the mouth of Scarborough Marsh, and if any community is going to have some or any place is going to have some, let's let's be on the lookout and look for it now, so that we don't have to be you know worrying about it later. Uh, with that said, um, you know I'm the person who always goes to the rule and says. How are you maintaining the natural buffer areas the most? So I'll, I'll be very much interested in, in how you're maintaining those natural buffer areas, including whether it's stream setbacks or wetland setbacks or using a forest as a stormwater treatment system. Um, because it's, it, this is all still pretty densely forested here, correct? Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, that a densely, you know, a densely forested area has a certain amount of um, absorption potential. So when we take away those forests, there, there's going to be a lot of ponded water. So I think we need to think about that really, really carefully. And, and speaking of such, how can you talk to me a little bit about 
how and why the roadway is laid out the way it is? If you could just give me some insight into your rationale. Sure. Well, um, at this point, we're still sort of hovering above the site at sort of a thousand feet. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> this road is actually an existing right of way that was that we sort of inherited from the previous approval. So, um, and the road was actually laid out sort of. Um, the design engineer who did this, I think, it was Joe Laverriere mm -hmm. uh, back years ago. Um, and it actually, you know, we got it spot on. So you want to balance your cuts and fills, yep. and you try to cross wetlands and avoid wetlands in areas where it makes the most sense to do so. Um, we're probably going to keep that alignment just because I think it's been tested out by uh, a number of different engineers and, and developers mm -hmm. as we sort of looked at this. Um, but, you know, the the size, you know, we we'll discuss, you know, how how wide does it have to be? We'll work with fire mm -hmm. um, chief and all all that stuff. Um, so I think sort of what you're seeing here is probably going to be close, I hope, to the final product. But uh, there's always room for for variations and changes. Okay. Well, do we have an idea of what the timeline will be um, as far as when you'd like to see? tenants moving in or, you know, you'd like to break ground. Do we have any idea as to the timing of uh, sequencing? I'll have to turn that one over. Okay, sure. <clears throat> so, Blaine Buck, uh, Courage Capital Projects Group. So, um, <clears throat> uh, once we once we go through the planning <laughs> process and the approval process, we'd like to, we'd like to think we could be somewhere around second quarter, uh, breaking ground the end of second quarter. Uh, calendar year? 2017. Okay. And this would be phased, most likely. Mm -hmm. Once again, this is a very this is a very collaborative process because um, we're working with uh, Newman Development, which is another entity. So during the master planning process, they have to be they have to be part of this, and okay. and they'll be here also to you know okay. to sort of explain that. Okay. Um, so you're looking at permitting very soon. Yes. Wow. So who on your team, and it sounds like you have a very great collaborative team, who on your team can can really speak to um, low impact development, making sure that as you remove those trees and the water's going to want a pond, how are you treating that immediately at the source sure. and not or are you are you fully relying on the existing permitted central drainage system? Can you tell by my tone so where I'm leading so you? Am I leading? So <laughs> the tone that says. <laughs> so, yeah. that so it's sort of, it's sort of yes and yes. Okay. We're, we're actually we've identified that we're we're working through that now. Mm -hmm. we're, we're not prepared, you know, to to actually answer that fully. Mm -hmm. But we we have decided to, if you will, burn down the existing you know, stormwater treatment systems mm -hmm. and look at new technologies for those. Right. Yeah. I mean, this is sort of a little bit older technology back okay. in 2000, yeah. 2003. Yeah. So that's the first thing we, we look at. Yeah. We've, we've come a long way. We know a lot, um, a lot, how to do it better right. than, than it was probably permitted in 2003. So that's where I'm going to lean on you, is to show us how you've taken all that we know in the last 13 years and, and really put it to work both aesthetically, but also, I think, you know, engineering-wise, Let's, let's make it, you know, a really, you know, great place to be kind of thing. Um, I, I think you'll find that because this is a residential development and how these are set up in uh, pods, if you will, so they're sort of individual neighborhoods, yeah. you, you want to maintain as, as, as much of the forest canopy right. environment around there. So that's our, that's our goal, you know, to do that. Otherwise, the project gets, gets less. Mm. Nice, nice. Um, who are, are you incorporating any green streets or complete streets, or is this out? Is this not required in this in this zoning area? Jay, is com or complete streets or green streets sort of yep. on the table here? I would I would think um, the expectation would be for, and, and I would imagine I'd have to go back and look, but the original approval had sidewalks. Yeah. on the streets and given the residential component that's being brought in, right. we might want to really look at ensuring we're having right. sidewalks on both sides of the streets, potential yeah. for esplanade. So yeah. um, I would think, you know, in, in terms in those type of, yeah. I think that would be the context we'd okay. be thinking in. Yeah. Um, and in terms of streets, I did just want to mention um, one of the things as we think about future development of the project is 
really critically thinking about the interconnection of mm -hmm. this parcel with the surrounding parcels. Right. Um, we think that's a, a critical element. Um, we did note in our in our uh, staff comments that there was, as part of the original approval, a right away left um, to property towards the uh, um, I'll say the top of the page as we're <laughs> looking at it here. Um, but in the subsequent years, that property has come forward, and we know that that's essentially just a very large wetland and probably not the greatest um, connection to be made. Um, so hopeful that as part of that master plan process, the applicant at that 1,000 foot level is able to take a look at those surrounding properties and understand the natural um, conditions that are around yes. where are sort of those upland pockets, yes. if not all <laughs> contiguous upland, at least yeah. island hopping yeah. um, hop. that can be done. Um, so. I did think, want to just take this yeah. opportunity I, you, to jump in You took in the there. words right out of my mouth because I, I think it's really important in an area like this, especially so close to, to Scarborough Marsh and, you know, sort of the center of town, it's important that we do to honor the natural, both the natural hydrology but also the, the natural resources um, in general there. Um, I, I wish you all well and, and, and encourage you to reach out to staff often and early. But we have to ensure okay. glad to hear it to ensure great communication and a great project thank you thanks so uh, definitely some good good comments uh, to this point and it sounds like you're off to a, a strong start in terms of thinking about the right things uh, being proactive on the wetlands that's great to hear um, obviously working with staff um, and um, you know I'm I'm excited about this concept um, I think it could really in addition to really sort of kick-starting and sort of sort of filling out that that area um, and that that project if you will um, any opportunity to bring more sort of residential to that that part of town and to the town in general this type of housing is is is, uh, is great so um, all that said just to briefly recap given that we are talking about site inventory analysis here. Um, you know, we've touched on what appear to be the key kind of uh, elements here, which are the, you know, the wetland fingers, potential for vernal pools was mentioned. We've got Willowdale Brook that runs through. Um, and so there's, there's that to, to continue to keep in mind. Um, there was reference in the staff comments to um, sort of taking stock of the built environment, um, which I think sometimes I, just, I thought was a very good point because sometimes we think about site inventory and analysis in terms of, um, rightfully so, in terms of the, the natural environment and what the topography is, what sort of water features there may be. But in this type of context, I think it is very important to make sure that we have a good handle on the, the existing built environment uh, on the, down that contiguous part of the project where the commercial has been built out so that as staff notes um, there's sort of a, a useful baseline mm -hmm. from which we can can move forward and, and looking at the, the, the rest of this build out here so that's something that uh, as was suggested in the in the staff memo it would be something to, to look at as part of the master plan phase um, as will be um, obviously will be a lot of questions and a lot of focus on traffic traffic patterns circulation internally and uh, externally onto and, and off of Route 1 as well. Um, the, uh, we mentioned Willow Brook and the need to sort of look at the setbacks from that, continue to look at that. And as staff just mentioned, the, the interconnectivity, that's obviously, that really gets to the heart of master planning. Mm -hmm. So we'll look forward to, to seeing more on that. But again, um, it's a an exciting promising concept and it sounds like you're off to a good start and hopefully we've given you um, helpful feedback and uh, it's good to take this first step okay. Okay. just out of curiosity have you considered the impact that uh, residential development would have on the commercial lots you haven't built out yet and the types of businesses you may be attracting instead of what you were hoping to attract originally. Yeah, you're very yeah. So one of the one of the items is one of the one of the great things about building residential next to this is actually how it does affect the commercial aspect and from growth retention. And uh, as David mentioned uh, discussing this through Bulas because we want we want more information on that. We want more metrics on that. And, 
exactly how that how that how that generates additional uh, you know additional commercial space and activity. Yeah, I, I figured it expands the opportunities for what you can attract down there, okay. and and I think you probably have to pay a little bit of consideration to the type of infrastructure you'll be offering as well if you're hoping to draw residential across the imaginary phase border here. Thanks, Nick. I think we're great. We're done for now. Thank you. Thank you. Look forward to seeing more. Uh, Mr. Chairman, may I adjust the board, please? Uh, my name is Sean Frank, this is Tobago Technics. I'm here on behalf of uh, Dunstan uh, Properties, LLC. Uh, Mr. Chamberlain, the, uh, the uh, managing member, is on a boiler being called out. He's hoping to get back in time. I understand you have one more agenda item uh, after a particular item. I didn't know if there was any chance, again, at the uh, uh, view of the board, if there's any chance maybe we could switch those, allow that group to go first, and hopefully that would allow my client uh, the opportunity to get back in time to, to talk to the board. Thank you. Um, is the other applicant here? Um, I I don't see any issue with that. And uh, if, if uh, Mr. Chamberlain is not here when we're done, then we'll have to reassess at that point. And again, I mean, we'll certainly do our best. But right. obviously, as you know, he's, he's had a lot in. I apologize for the, the impact on the folks here. Um, uh, but as you know, he's obviously been very okay. uh, involved in this process, and again, he right. certainly apologizes to the board. Uh, he certainly is hopeful to get back here uh, before the uh, the end of the meeting. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Sorry. All right, thanks for letting us know. So, I think she just went to the restroom. Okay. Uh, do you want a motion to modify the agenda? So. Um, I will move that um, we modify the agenda so that we take as our next item, item number nine, Crest Motel LLC. Second. Second. We don't have a. We don't have I think a for a pers administrative action, we can. So it's we can deal nine. with with it as a three board okay. member, and, and then we we'll wait for Ms. Douglas to done that in the past. Be present. All right. For the actual business right. or the um, okay. actionable items, so to speak. So you made a motion. He seconded it. Or well, I moved. think then we we determine that we given that it's really a treat it like an absentee. Yep. Or an abstain. Yeah, yeah treat it as an mm -hmm. abstention. Still the majority of the quorum. Three votes. Okay. okay. All right. So we <laughs> we have a motion to take up the next item. Yes. Crest Hotel. Seconded. Second discussion. I, I guess I'm I'm wondering uh, has I'm wondering of the uh, th there's an immense amount of staff comments on the, on that project. Are we even really prepared to talk about it tonight? Well, I uh, my intent in introducing that item and I and I I know Jay is on the same wavelength as well would be that we would make it very clear that. Um, that we were going to keep that as brief and concise as possible and not have it be an open-ended discussion given that there are a lot of open items on that. Yeah. Um, so it's, a, it's sort of our prerogative on that. Okay. It, so given that, um, I'm, I'm fine moving forward with the revision to the agenda. Okay. We have a motion and a second on that. So we have a motion and a second for taking Crest Motel as our next item. All in favor? All right, that's unanimous. Thank you. So, all that said, item number nine, Crest Motel LLC requests final subdivision approval for 11 Willowdale Road, Assessor's Map U39, Lot 41. Jay? Yep, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, this application is before the board for subdivision of property located at 11 Willowdale. The site is in the R4 district. It also has uh, stream protection and shoreland overlay districts um, on it as well. The proposal seeks approval for development of five dwelling units on an existing lot where there's an existing single-family residence and they're looking to add two duplex units. Um, 
board members will probably recall this item as it was before you and received preliminary approval in September. So much of the design elements and sort of heavy lifting is typically done at the preliminary approval process and there were certainly some cleanup items that still needed to be addressed. Um, based on the applicant's resubmission from, that, from prior staff comments and board comments, um, staff is generally comfortable with what's proposed. We do have a few comments uh, for the board that are, remain outstanding, um, but we believe they're fairly um, uh, easy to be addressed by the applicant moving forward. So um, we have prepared a draft motion for the board to consider if you are so inclined this evening. With that, I turn it back to you, Mr. Chair. Thanks, Jay. Uh, does the applicant have anything to add? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, my name is Bill Thompson with BH2M Engineers, and as Jay indicated, we were back here in September and one of my partners here, I wasn't able to make it. Uh, but we're in here tonight, uh, Paul Russo, the applicant <coughs> under the uh, Crest Motel LLC. Uh, as Jay indicated, we have five units, two duplexes, and then the one existing building, which will be uh, converted to a uh, residential. At the last meeting, we, I had comments from the board, uh, staff comments that came in from Jay and uh, town engineer, the peer review, <coughs> and my submission September 27th, um, touched on those. Um, we also, um, over between the two meetings, we received uh, approval from the sanitary district <coughs> for the sewer connection. So my cover letter September 27th went down through. Uh, the board had asked um, clarification in uh, the uh, net residential acreage calculations, uh, which are on she one. Uh, uh, identify and label the stream protection district. Uh, Proposed stormwater improvements, we had a, uh, the first attempt was, was to use a level spreader. We've gone to a uh, grass underdrain system, which was recommended, and uh, that's been approved by, by the town engineer. We had some notes to sheet one, <coughs> revised that they asked for clarification on uh, parking out here, uh, signs at the end of the gravel for fire lane, no parking. Those have been added. <coughs> and... Um, Trimming the existing vegetation out here on, on uh, Willowdale Road, and uh, everyone weighed in on that to be trimmed up uh, at a height of about 10 feet, so we have better sight distance out there. <clears throat> we also had a few comments from the town engineer, again, uh, mostly on the uh, grass underdrain filter system, making sure it met the uh, stormwater requirements of the site, which it does. Erosion control notes. Uh, been added and updated to make sure they reflect the um, latest edition. And comments from Warden and Curran, there were four that were addressed uh, from the September 14th memo from them. And again, that just talked about the stormwater uh, flow path and the underdrain filter again, uh, which, was, which was asked for and commented by uh, multiple departments. Our most recent submission <coughs> um, was October 7th. And that is a response and a reflection of uh, comments from Wooden and Curran, which was one comment, and three comments from, from Jay. <clears throat> so the staff comments uh, talked about the light fixture out at uh, Willowdale. Uh, it will be a CMP fixture, but it's a responsibility of the homeowners association to maintain that and pay any, any fees associated with that. And it will be a full cutoff fixture to uh, meet the, uh, the requirements. Uh, we had a note on sheet three indicating the exterior slope of the underdrain filter will be two to one, which all that information shows on plan sheet three. And we added a clean out at the end of the underdrain manifold on the uh, vegetative soil filter. Uh, and again, that's shown and labeled on sheet three. Wooden and Curran had one comment <coughs> in their memo. And again, that was about the uh, time of concentration with the stormwater coming from the site getting to the treatment field. And that has been. Uh, adjusted. It was adjusted a slight amount, and on a 25-year storm, there was a slight increase on post development. That <coughs> has been looked at by uh, Angela and also by Jay's uh, department. Uh, so with that, I believe um, we've responded to, like I said, the last planning board meeting, staff comments. We did go out and verify the stream location that was asked of us, uh, and that has, has maintained uh, where it was shown in the original approval. And we also had uh, Mark Hampton go out and re-delineate re uh, the wetlands, which had not changed. So those numbers all came back uh, as they had in our 2010 approval. If you remember, this was approved in 2008 and in 10, 
for this building out here to be commercial, and then we had a commercial building uh, approved and obviously not built, uh, given that there was no demand for it. So we're here requesting a final approval for these five residential units. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Susan, do you have anything on this? No, I think that the questions I had were answered um, by the latest presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Robin? Um, did, did Mark, you said it was Mark Hampton who did the wetlands. Um, was it in his scope to look for significant vernal pools? Yes. Yes. That was looked at back in 2008 and 2010. And it, wasn't, was, it wasn't rechecked? It was, yes. Part of his evaluation of the wetlands. Okay. In 2016? Yes. Correct. Okay. Yep. Perfect. Um, so you mentioned that there is a slight increase to the post-development flow? Correct. About 2% about increase. Um, what type of CFS does that translate to? Let me pull that letter out. <coughs> I believe it was, uh, well, let me not, not believe, let me give you the exact numbers. <laughs> the uh, pre-development on a 25-year storm was 2.86 CFS, cubic feet per second, and it went up to 2.93. And again, our discharge point here, um, this land is all uh, undeveloped, and we're about 115 feet before we get to any resource. So, with that, uh, is that land? Is that is that your property? Yes, it is. Yep. Okay. Is and there the, any the grades? Grades all come down through here. The wetlands are back here. Yep. Is is it developable property? No. The, the, this this is the maximum development that this okay. piece can support. Um. Angela, is there a provision to allow po an, an increase in post-development flow? I believe it just talks about, um, well, we look at erosion or mm -hmm. impacts to abutting properties or impacts below that. Mm -hmm. um, what you're talking about is 0 0.07 CFS. I think they did a lot to come down, and that's where we talked about adding the LID feature that actually detains the flow through there, and right. that's why I was a little more particular. I think on the downstream side of that, that was one of my one of my last comments was how they are protecting that slope um, ah, coming out of the that. One. Yep. Okay. The, the um, under drain. So filter. do you feel like the clean out manifold addresses that? And and that was another thing of talking about more about the maintenance of this and okay. upkeep of that and making that as simple as possible. Um, those, yeah, all kind of played into that is, is ensuring that this will get maintained and that that will be stable below. <laughs> okay. Who will be, who'll be conducting the, the, the post-construction uh, uh, inspections of the clean-out manifold and but doing the maintenance? Who will be doing that? It will be assigned to the uh, owner presently, Paul Russo, and then when the units are sold and developed, there will be a, a condominium association for maintenance and management. And is, do, does the town require that those executed contracts be submitted for post-construction MS4 you know, MS or MCM5? And this site does not trigger Chapter 419 for post-construction okay. um, annual reporting. One of the things I think, um, and maybe Jay can speak to this, um, that we require uh, the PE on record to certify when it's installed and it's designed, that it was built as designed. Okay. So we kind of get just that, the okay. initial. Um, beyond that, and if they don't trigger that threshold, they don't aren't required to do the annual report. Then there's no recertification pro processes required either, like there is for DEP? No? Not in our... Okay. All right. Um, and you said that the, the lighting will meet the existing cutoff standards um, in the ordinance? And I don't have anything else. Thanks, Robin. Yep. Nick, anything? All set. No? Good. Thanks. Um, I don't think I have anything either. Um, appreciate you walking us through how the staff remaining staff comments have been addressed. And um, I think everything's in order. So I will put a motion forward. Um, I move to approve the application of Crest Motel LLC. Uh, plans prepared by BH2M engineers under the provisions of the Town of Scarborough Zoning Ordinance and Subdivision Ordinance for the final subdivision plan of the Willowdale <coughs> Common Subdivision with the following findings and conditions. Findings as stated herein. Conditions. Number one, prior to the release of the attested final subdivision plan to the applicant, 
for recording at the Cumberland County Registry of Deeds, the applicant shall A, pay the required traffic impact fee of $2,500, B, revise the plan details to address the comments in staff's memo, final plans to be reviewed by the planning department staff, and number two, prior to issuance of a building permit, the applicant shall record the declaration of unified ownership document at the Cumberland County Registry of Deeds. That's the motion. Second. We have a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Time. We will come back to item number eight. Dunstan Properties LLC requests subdivision and site plan review for Route 1 and Stewart Drive, Assessor's Map U30, Lot 16 and 17. Jay. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so let's see. This discussion tonight is part of the ongoing review regarding the development of the uh, Dunstan Village commercial lots in the TVC district. Board members will recall this item has been before you going back to last summer, summer of 2015, starting with the plan development review process, which laid out sort of a con uh, conceptual layout and development pattern for the property. And then more recently, I believe it was just our last meeting there before you for sketch plan review. Um, this is the first formal application where we really get into the nuts and bolts of the subdivision and site plan review. So this is where really that critical review of the fine grain elements begin. Um, that being said, there, as you have received staff comments from town engineer, planning staff, uh, um, peer reviewers, there's a lot of open questions and a lot of details to still be worked out. Um, the applicant has received those comments as well and we've actually been talking and we do have a meeting scheduled for tomorrow morning. Um, that I was um, uh, happy to report on. So we'll be going over a number of those um, uh, in just a few hours. <laughs> um, so with that, you know, again, understanding that there are a lot of details and a lot of information that's still needed, um, you know, this opportunity, this, this discussion might be a good opportunity to really talk a little bit more about process, try to really understand what the applicant, again, where we have a, a plan developed, we have the master plan approved that gives us the general concept of what's happening. Mm -hmm. You know, is there an opportunity to really sort of take certain nuggets or buildings per se and start the site plan review process as the overarching subdivision process begins? For example, we know the restaurant is of high priority for the developer based on our last discussion. So is there a way to draw out that site plan, given that we already have an approved commercial site um, and an approved roadway, to really begin that process, but understanding that it is ultimately going to fit into a bigger process. Um, and so maybe that's part of the discussion we could have tonight or some of the groundwork we could lay. Um, outside of that, I'm not going to spend a lot of time going through everything we have here because, again, I think there's just a lot more questions at this point that we can get to, but it takes time um, given the scope and complexity of the project. So with that, I turn it back to you, Mr. Chair. Thanks, Jay. And, and being mindful of that, um, I would just ask uh, the applicant's representative that, um, you know, given especially that there will be a meeting tomorrow morning with, with the town staff that we not necessarily spend our time kind of walking through and, and digging through each and every item, which is still in the process of being vetted and, and sussed out with staff. But again, as Jay suggested, sort of focus on sort of the process and start to pick up a couple of sort of high priority items to 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 address this evening and then we will have the opportunity for for uh, for public comment and uh, we can have uh, any board discussion or questions that we have at that point and with the understanding that you know we'll be seeing you again and we'll be seeing mr. Chamberlain again and and continuing to work through this kind of methodically so thank it's you all mr. yours Chairman, for, thank for, you for, uh, in terms of introductions, I'm Sean Frank. I'm an engineer with Stegel Technics in South Florida. Uh, Mr. Jamal, again, I was hopeful that he'll be here uh, for too long. Uh, appreciate everyone's patience. 
uh, and certainly appreciate staff's uh, cooperation as well. Certainly we understood uh, a lot of the loose ends and a lot of the details associated with it. Uh, we will have hopefully everybody in the room together tomorrow so that we can kind of start working out some of the real specific details associated with this. But it certainly seems at the same time, uh, again, you, you folks kind of looked at the master plan, sketch plan, if you will, of the overall thing with the uh, landscape architects and architects last time, uh, that perhaps, look, again, at least our general thoughts in terms of how we're going to be handling uh, the overall stormwater, the grading of the site, uh, and the utility services to the site. So at least you're at least uh, keen on that. And uh, initially, I know traffic is, is, well, let me just get started on the overall. And this is the overall Dunstan Crossing subdivision. Uh, that you've all seen numerous times, Broad Turn Road over through here, Route 1 up along this end. What we have are the two commercial lots, if you will, that were associated uh, with the frontage along Route 1. Uh, we used then the process we went through in terms of the master planning uh, through the last year and the plans you saw last time, uh, which led to uh, this development plan, if you will, uh, which basically had a mixed use of a restaurant, uh, office facilities, retail facilities, and, uh, and uh, apartments and townhouse units. Uh, what we've taken that, if you will, is to try to take it and at least go to the next step. And again, I know this is the prettiest plan, uh, but to just kind of give an overall concept in terms of what we were looking at, both the stormwater, initial grading associated with this, and the overall utility services to the site. So again, this is the uh, proposed intersection of Stewart Drive, uh, coming off of Route 1, uh, coming down into the project site. Uh, the facilities on either side, the uh, mixed uses on either side associated with that. Uh, the intersection itself has obviously been uh, something we've been studying uh, great a bit, working with DOT, having conversations with the, uh, uh, the peer review engineer for the, uh, for the traffic for the town of Scarborough. Uh, as Jay mentioned, we were looking at one time, perhaps going with uh, three lanes down through here, with one lane south, one lane north, and a right, left, center turn lane. Uh, to see if that can kind of kind of help with the whole traffic issue over here. Uh, we've sort totally of backed off from that, if you will, at this point in time. Uh, so our thoughts are we're going to be looking at something probably a little bit simpler at the intersection. Uh, again, we're still in that analysis phase, and obviously we want to work with staff uh, before we make a formal presentation to the planning board. Uh, from a grading standpoint, uh, the site generally rises slightly. It's, it's pretty well flat along in through here. Uh, rises just a little bit and then dies down. This is the, uh, the good size. Uh, uh, travel pit, if you will, that have been constructed, excavated back in the day when they uh, uh, did the work associated with the uh, turnpike. Uh, our intent here is this to come up at about a 1%, so one foot and a, and a hundred, uh, to a high spot, basically right within the island of the right of way, and then down to 1%, and then steepen it off back, way back down into the pump station, if you will, back to where we had the original design. In association with that, we'd be filling in uh, uh, the gravel pit uh, that's been excavated quite a bit basically 15 to 20 feet in some areas. As you may recall the idea of that uh, but as part of the master plan for the overall Dunstan Crossing, I mean, this would be a, uh, a recreational field, but more of a, a, a general, more of a, a grass field where you could go and, and picnic and throw a frisbee or, uh, or those types of things on a real formal athletic field. Uh, so we actually have some good fill associated with it down through there. Uh, from a sewer standpoint, uh, we would have a, a brand new gravity system we can extend with into a drive, uh, as well as within a service of uh, manholes throughout the site, uh, down to a proposed pump station down in this location here. Uh, this pump station was part of the original design associated with the, uh, the uh, Dunstan Crossing subdivision. Uh, the intent of this is basically to pick up uh, everything within the commercial development, as well as all of the other, uh, all of the other. residential development within the uh, Dunson Crossing subdivision. So basically this whole pond in through here. Obviously from the district standpoint, you know, they'll have it appropriately sized so that they can just increase the size of the pumps and maybe do the case of any other future development that might be able to tie into that. This pump will pump up to the gravity system within uh, phase one of the Dunson Crossing, which goes down to the pump station that had been previously installed along the uh, broad turn road. It is the intent that that pump station will be uh, uh, public and turned over to the district at the end of the day. Uh, water is uh, relatively straightforward, uh, if that's ever such a thing. Uh, we're actually going to have to post the foul bridge line down to the Stewart Drive. The water district now asks that we increase that to 16, uh, just from capacity, and to make sure everything works out from their standpoint. 
Uh, within that, we just have individual services for the building. Each of the buildings will be uh, sprinkled and uh, fed domestically. Uh, this side, because of the private nature associated with it, we'll actually have a meter pit for the domestic water service uh, to come in and service the individual buildings, and, uh, and one main coming in to yeah, the service the sprinkles. Um, from the stormwater management standpoint, as I discussed, it comes up a little bit for us, and then dives back down, if you will, as we're coming through here. Uh, we have had many discussions with DEP, including the biologists, uh, in terms of how we handle the stormwater management associated with this. Well, we are proposing to pick up the, uh, the individual roofs. The soils up through here are uh, quite pervious, the water goes works its way down through the soils relatively quickly. Uh, so to pick up the roof water, which is generally much cleaner than the parking lots, and to repercolate that to the degree possible down into the soil uh, to kind of recharge the, uh, the minor access up to the uh, uh, The remainder of the site will pretty much be picked up within a, a standard uh, stories, uh, uh, series of catch basins and slip surface stone drain pipes. We have uh, two uh, wet ponds proposed, uh, one in this area, uh, one in this area down through here. Uh, basically, generally uh, accepting approximately half of the site as well as a portion of Stewart Drive and whatever else uh, future development had previously been developed or proposed uh, in association with the other uh, uh, So, again, Mr. Chairman, uh, I do appreciate that uh, you know we have a lot of detail to work out through here. Uh, we certainly appreciate the time of staff to kind of work our way through there. Uh, we are working with DEP, we are working with DOT, the Portland Water District, the Scarborough Sanitary District. So uh, there are a lot of players that are involved in this uh, that we try to, uh, you know, obviously bring everything to fruition. And but again, what we didn't want to do was just kind of come to you folks and say, boom, here it is all at once. I appreciate it, Jay, just in terms of being able to come in and, uh, you know, here's our thoughts regarding this aspect of it. We certainly understand that we'll have a, a much firmer grasp on uh, traffic in the next point. As Jay mentioned, obviously from a, a standpoint of what we have is everything's based on uh, business, as you can imagine. Uh, we have a restaurant that is interested, uh, so that probably would be priority one from the applicant standpoint. Uh, and again, I was hoping he could speak in that a little bit more, but uh, we'll certainly work with staff a little bit perhaps tomorrow as well in terms of, you know, maybe identifying the specific use that we want to, we want everything to work from a, uh, an overall standpoint, uh, but obviously from a timing perspective, there's some things that we want to have happen uh, quite quickly versus obviously we have more time with other aspects of it. So uh, with that, I'll conclude my uh, presentation and certainly be happy to answer any questions that the board has. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you. Uh, before we do go to uh, board discussion, we do have the opportunity, as I mentioned, for a public comment here. Um, and I will add that, you know, given the scale of this and the fact that we are, I think it is good to have sort of an interim kind of check in and at least a brief conversation about it as we work through this. Um, you know, we, I would ex expect that we'll offer um, additional opportunity for public input as well as we move forward, given, again, the scale of this and that we're sort of working through it piece by piece. So uh, with that, I'd welcome anyone who would like to come on up to just introduce themselves, give their name and address, and um, try to keep your comments to five minutes or less. Uh, my name is Marty Masiso. I'm here with my wife, Susan. I am in Abada. I live at 697 U.S. Route 1. Uh, I apologize for that earliest comment of I object. I have a guy working my lobster pond right now. I promised I'd be home. I'm not. Anyway, Sorry. that's okay. Anyway, <laughs> I am not opposed. Oh, of course you can. Absolutely. Could you uh, grab the handheld you grab mic? The, you can grab the handheld mic, too. I should, I should go oh, thank you. <laughs> See this here? See this smile? I am so happy that this is going in. Ten years ago, Elliot and John came to us from the Great American Neighborhood was going in and said, this is what we're going to do, do with this project. Great. Perfect. We know what happened. We're then being delayed and all. And so I have a very good smile, but I have a couple of things I'd like to bring up. Uh, 
I also passed on that property, lot 19697, which is the same size as this lot here, which used to be lot 18, which has disappeared and became lot 17. So I own 100 by 700, all the way down to here. That used to be all the way down to here. Ten years ago, when we talked to the Chamberlains, and we were concerned about it, because when my uncle died in 84, me and my wife moved into our house and operated a business that he had been running since 1949. And this was a great uplifting for us. Uh, so here we are, here they are. They said, don't worry, this is a big project, Great American Neighborhood. We got a natural buffer there, uh, right here. That's fine, thank you. Uh, fast forward to where we are now. This is a different project from, Dun from Great American Neighborhood. It is Dunstan property that that uh, Elliot's going to run. And, uh, and I've, Elliot came to me a year ago and told me he was going to do this. We've been out very upfront with each other. Uh, get along with him good and always will. Anyways, so now uh, I'm glad we have the water girl and the landscape lady and and um, Nick, I hope I can call you Nick, <laughs> taking up our side here a little bit. Uh, this building here, this last two uh, the one at Enterprise down there, they said they're going to build all those buildings. No one asked how tall those buildings were going to be. Um, and when this was developed, these buildings were only, with the TVC, two stories. So we're very surprised that we found out that this is going to be three stories. So last week when I came here, I grabbed the leader and went through it, and they just had the best dogs. And I tried to figure out what does a three-story building look like. So I found this as I was going through it. Uh, it's the Higgins Beach mm. Inn, mm -hmm. okay? So you can see the Higgins Beach Inn, that's three stories, right? With no roof. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to move back 10 feet. This is 10 feet. That's 10 feet. That's 20. That's 30. This is what is going to be 10 feet of my property line. Right here. Now, it was, it was stated last time, this was an empty canvas. But this is where they're going to put this. Not back here, which they had controlled in the TPC. Don't know why it went away, but it went away. Uh, so you see what I mean by that three story. Uh, so elevation. When you when you're in Dr. Stereo, which is six nine five, just street level, you come up to my house, it jumps up probably where this tree is, probably eight feet. You go where the parking lot is, it, I can stand on the top of that and look at my second floor window. So there is an elevation here, quite, quite big. It isn't, oh, they're going to go down, it's two feet, this and that. I didn't see any elevation anywhere, so I'm kind of, don't know where that's going. But if there is such an elevation, and they propose to put this building in, this close, what is the step down? Are my kids going to fall, my great kids going to fall down and break their necks? Also, what kind of uh, vegetation and the shrubbery can you put 10 feet in a slope? Uh, also, they say this, this is very curvier. Is that the right word? I hope it is. When we put the pool in back here 30 years ago, because I shipped out, my wife and just had to stay home and, uh, and keep the kids home while we were in the business, it was clay. This is clay here under here. So, say what they want. That's clay. This is close. My father lives here in this little house here in the, in the summer. Those in Florida in the winter. 
I want set that. My reach field is right here. There's a, my reach field is, and because there's a lot of, there was a uh, business, they made me build a big one. So it's almost like 80 feet long that I had to build. I call it the monument. They can bury me there when I die. Oh, it cost so much money. <laughs> Anyways, one other thing. He said he's going to, and I, I'm nothing against him, because I want this project to go, so I'm not saying anything against him. I just, for something for you guys to think about. Oh, there's going to be a pond. Well, I walk back here all the time. I, my kids uh, had motorbikes, and they were in the air. I cross-country skied this thing. I'm so glad it's going through. But back here, in the stream, Phillips Brook is, is back here. Uh, so just some things to think about. And uh, like I say, I'm on septic. That's my leech field. And I uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Oh, there come on. I just doing? want to elaborate that, how important this is for me. I've been there 33 years. Now, you know, it's our piece of the world, if you know what I mean. So now it's a big change for me because I'm going to be looking up as, as I've always just looked out at trees and greens and, and whatnot. And, yes, I do live on Route 1, but that was the beauty. I love Route 1, and then I'd go out back, and I'd have all this empty space. So, yes, I had it for 33 years, and I'm happy about that. Now I have grandchildren. They also love to go out, and I'm just concerned really with the pool. I have three granddaughters, and I really don't want all these eyeballs looking down at them in their little bathing suits. One's 14, <laughs> she's big, but you know what I mean. So, oh, and I'm glad that you do love lit landscaping because that would be so important. If I go in, if somebody would just look out for us to make sure that it is, you know, landscaped. So we do have some privacy as we are used to. And I think that's, that's about it. So thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Could you please state your name just for the record? Sue Missiso. Thank you very much. Thank you. No, oh, it's great. There'll be more opportunities. Yeah. <laughs> you did very well. You did very well. Thank you. Anyone else? OK. Well, we, we do appreciate that very much. Um, and we'll turn to the board. Susan, would you like to kick us off? Oh, this is so huge. It's huge. I really appreciate what you had to say. It gives me permission to say it's all about landscaping. And um, <clears throat> when we get to talk about what's going to go where, which we're just starting that process, right? We're not at any point of decision making yet. Um, I would not have thought of that. I would not have thought of that. So this is the importance of public input. I, I think it's very important, and thank you for coming and pointing that out to us. Um, there's a, an, an, an awful lot in this that we need to talk about, but I would like to suggest that we not get into it too intensely tonight because they're going to meet tomorrow morning and probably discuss everything that I think is important. Um, um, but there were a couple of things th that I want to make sure do get discussed. Um, the sidewalk thing seems big and undetermined and unsettled. So how that gets done, I mean, th there's a lot of stuff in here about, um, uh, it's in staff comments about the um, sidewalk business. And the islands, the pedestrian islands, I'm very confused about the pedestrian islands. I, I don't quite understand what it is that they think they're going to install as opposed to what it is that we expect they're going to install. <coughs> and this, that, to me, that's primarily important, only secondary to them not having to look at a high rise from their side yard. Um, <coughs> this is supposed to be a neighborhood feel. So let's just make sure that that happens. Um, you know, landscaping again for the for the um, um, parking, etc. I'm not too. I'm not sure where we are with the drive-through thing because I had, from what I had heard so far, it was. I understood that it was the building was going to be built for the drive-through, but now the applicant is saying they're not seeking approval for a drive-through, but we need to prepare ourselves for the fact that they may want to in the future. So that's very confusing to me. The net residential calculations, I mean, they're talking a language I don't even begin to understand. It's 
foreign to me, but I know it's incredibly important. So the net residential and calculations are of prime importance, and when you come back next time, I'd like to see maybe two pages, if not five, of undetermined origin. Thank you very much. Thanks, Susan. I don't want to make it sound like I'm not excited about this because I am. We need this. I think that that part of Scarborough will result, we will all benefit from this, and what the Chamberlains do, they do well, and they welcome feedback, so I'm not concerned about it, but I'm not, look, this is this is the paperwork for tonight I'm on this one issue, so I'm a little overwhelmed. Thank you. Thank you, Robin. Um, I'm gonna be real to the point. What's the hurry? The hurry always comes down when you have a specific user that wants to go in, and in this particular case, it's specifically right now it's the restaurant. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, it's, but it always comes down to. I mean. Okay, so we'll probably see you in three weeks for final approval. Well, I can't think that's the whole point of the conversation <laughs> is I think we were trying to come in because every time I'm in front of this board, they always say, don't come in piecemeal, come in with the whole thing. So I think we've tried to keep coming in with the whole thing associated with this is what we see as the full development associated with this. But you're right, in terms of what are the hot spots and what are the specific things we're going to be looking for. And again, we'll certainly talk to, to, to Jay on this and then to staff tomorrow because, uh, again, I certainly don't want to speak for the applicant. Um, uh, but, you know, yeah, there are certainly things from a business standpoint that once these guys are ready to move, especially from a restaurant, they have a specific time they want to open, and if they can't open that time, okay, well, maybe we'll come back next year. So is that a yes, we'll see you in three weeks? Or no? Oh, I will be back in three weeks. I'm not saying I'm going to be here for a final in three okay. weeks, but I mean, I okay. will, I mean, I certainly anticipate that you're going to see us every three weeks for, for a while, okay. a bit. Um, Last time you were here, I did pick up on the fact that we needed some type of, that there was a, at least an eight-foot drop between the restaurant and the neighbors. And we talked, this is the site, Angela, isn't it? And so we talked with Elliot about it. So has, has anything happened to the plan to talk about needing some type of safety fence or something like that between, not that that's the answer to, but, you know, just for safety. And because I think, too, that some of the, along their property here, the, like either the fence or the building was going to encroach on the setback? Yes. Okay. So I am thinking of the right yeah, property. Yeah, right. That's right. And I know that the, the later plan that I have seen now from, mm -hmm. again, I'm, I have to apologize because in case I have a little confusion here too, because obviously I'm working with Foresight Architects and, and they've been the main focus in terms of the master plan and pulling that mm -hmm. particular plan together. But I do know that based upon those last comments, this building, is, as I recollect, is certainly moved. Okay. And again, I don't want to make the building it sound like it's a great a bit, thing, but it's moved about. But it has, it has, the has the issue of the the, the, the two to one slope, or some type of safety feature been and I, it's specifically addressed? I would say no. So I will certainly okay. take a look at that. If if I could just jump on that, I just want to be clear See. that that was on the other side. It was. That was on the yeah. other okay. side, and that was the 25 foot. If you remember, and there was the 25 right. foot setback to the residential yeah. zone, where the property that the Mississos are in is actually in the same TVC zone, so there Got isn't the requirement for the 25-foot setback, but certainly this board through the site plan and subdivision review process has, you know, buffering standards, screening standards that you can use, uh, your, you know, um, Thank you. as applicable. So Thank you for clarifying. Just, uh, yeah, excellent. Well, and I appreciate that, too, because yep. that gives me some yep. credit. Uh, but again, just from this building standpoint, I do know, and that must have been part of the conversation you folks had last night, because I do know that at least in the last plan I have seen from them, that they mm -hmm. did push that building up closer to the parking lot. Okay. But I will take a look at that squad as well. So talk to me too about, you know, I'm also very interested in low impact development. What in low impact development and maintaining of natural features have you incorporated into this? Anything yet? Very little, obviously, in terms of this site here. I mean, obviously, it's it's the commercial portion of this whole thing, so you're right. I mean, basically, yep. it's going to be developed almost so, from side to side. So, I mean, I don't want to make an awful lot of promises, obviously, in terms of saved vegetation, because uh, on this particular piece of land, again, as you remember, oh, the overall project, obviously, they were 
okay. large swaths, if you will, of, uh, of forest land that was retained in is, so is open space. So I'll just echo the fact that I think we need to, to think about low impact development because it brings us to the Phillips Brook issue. Absolutely. Can I just go on that just a little bit more, though, Robin, if you don't mind? Because the other part of that conversation was a conversation we had with the DEP. Um, okay. But again, because of the soils and the fact that at least, again, from what we've seen up here with the excavation we've done, is the fact that it's a, mm -hmm. it's a good sandy soil that allows a percolation through the soils relatively quickly. One of their main concerns was chlorides going through the soils yep. and coming down. Yep. So that's why we were talking about, from the low impact standpoint, concentrating more on the roofs, mm -hmm. infiltrating that runoff from the roofs, if you will, because that's relatively clean and obviously doesn't have the chlorides, than actually collecting the runoff from the parking areas because of the chlorides and correcting most of these ponds, which will be... Where are the ponds located again, real quick, Sean? Here and here. Here, here and there. Okay. And and have you also did did I assume it's Jeff Dennis that you talked with? That's correct. Case. Yes. Did he talk to you too about equalization of those flows during really high storm events, and making sure that those flows get sort of attenuated over time instead of blasting the stream? Uh, he. Also, he said that that was something he was going to work with with okay. Ben. Okay, so obviously what we do have is with the gravel bench associated with that is yep. obviously the stream protection uh, volumes that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So that is all something that Ben Viola does have, okay. and I do know that him and, and Jeff. Will I be just want to make sure that it's on the radar screen because I know you're going to be talking with staff tomorrow, kind of thing. And, and I appreciate it because again, obviously. Yep. The ponds, we have had that conversation. Obviously, yep. Ben Viola, who is the review engineer for the DEP, yep. knows that Jeff has been involved, that we've okay. had those conversations with him. So certainly, you okay. know, whatever we have to do, if, and if I have to adjust those ponds, I mean, obviously, yep. we can play with those ponds. Okay. We have plenty of yeah. them. And, or just some type of outlet control. Sean. Exactly. Uh, Phillips Brook Crossing, can you talk to me about, are you going to do a culvert? Are you looking at 1.5 bank full? What are you talking about for a stream crossing? Well, we here? did have a 42-inch culvert there originally as part of our original proposal, which was part of the the approval. But again, I, I think I've heard it from Angela, and we certainly heard it with the DEP as well. Uh, so I have talked to the applicant, and we are designing a box culvert that will be installed into there. With uh, a natural native substrate The idea, the right, is that we actually have baffles within the bottom of it, so that we'll have... Thank okay. Uh, Thank you. Uh, soil in it. Thank you. Uh, he actually did Thank one down you. at his park north development. It was your idea. <laughs> <laughs> so it's actually, he, he has constructed one uh, previously, and uh, uh, so that is part of the uh, the process we're going through in terms that, of finalizing. Thank that. you for being a good neighbor. I I appreciate that. And um, and and so with that said, I'm not going to dig too far into it either. Um, I will comment that. It, it makes it hard on us when when there is a significant amount of comments like this. So, so um, yeah, it's we look forward to the next one. We do, and and after you you make all the agreements with staff, we look forward to having you come back, Sean. And I appreciate that, Robin. Yeah. It's like where do you? you got to start somewhere, you know, yeah. and unfortunately that's where yeah. we were because we had a project that had been approved from all the way down and basically yeah. it included Stuart Drive all the way up right. through the one. I know. All right, with the commercial lots, which were the blank canvases at that yeah. point in time. And of course, again, we were working with Foresight in terms of, you know, here's the master okay. plan, here's the site plan associated with this. Now we're trying to meld two projects together, if you will, and, you know, and the implications associated with that. So, uh, you know, and... Uh, I will yeah. say one thing about staff is, you know, they're certainly not bashful. I mean, they'll certainly be more than happy to tell me, you know, where I stand on these different things. Good job, staff. And again, <laughs> uh, uh, but, you know, at the same time, they're very open about yeah. meeting with us and going through these things, too, which, again, we will do tomorrow. And hopefully, I think that with that, that will certainly, you know, allow thank us you, to address a lot Thank of you for that cooperative relationship, really. Thank you. I'd like to second that because I think that this is an example of what happens when you have an excellent staff and an applicant that knows what they're doing. It may not be an easy route, but we end up where we need to be. And we sit here looking at this stuff, which is pretty darn technical, but I trust the fact that the applicant knows what we want and the staff knows what we want, and it all comes out in the wash. It's a little overwhelming when you sit here and you get four inches of paperwork, but I don't get too upset because these people know what they're doing. And I think this is a perfect example. So thank you. Thank you. I will be quick and to the point. Is there anything the applicant or staff needs from me as to a direction or opinion in advance of tomorrow morning's meeting? Good question. Good question. Good question. <laughs> Good question. I think, yeah. I think for staff's perspective, having been through multiple iterations and really looking at the conceptual plan, you know, I, I don't know that we're looking for any direct staff comments at this point, just 
are, are things generally headed the way you anticipated them? And if there's anything huge that jumps out at you, let us know now. But again, there are a lot of things. So I'm at, I'll speak for myself. Angela, I don't know if you have anything in particular you're looking no, I, I think after we meet and we go through some of these comments, like you said, I think next time will be a lot more beneficial when the planning board sees it and you'll be able to, you know, get into some of the details. Right now it's kind of um, higher just because we don't want to get into every little nitpicky thing. Right. And I think mm -hmm. staff can, can deal with that and give you something that you can actually comment on, I think, next time working with the applicant. Is there is there any way to to, like, just so that we're not looking at a week before the next planning board meeting, you know, like that monster paperwork, is there any way that we could get minutes or like an update from the meeting or anything like that? Is there any way to like sort of like prime the pump to, so that we can we can help on our end and be a little more responsive as well? Or is that unheard of? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm new to this. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I won't well, speak for staff and Jay can jump in, but I would think that given that this meeting is happening tomorrow morning, yeah. that that would fall well within their their regular timing parameters for in including yeah. uh, details for us as okay. part of our packet, whether it's minutes or you know sort of a bullet point summary of, of kind of where they where they're ending up on things. Well, I, I, and I will say certainly what you'll see from us as part of this is is we have, you know, we have their written comments and we will certainly provide a written response to each and all of those comments as part uh, of our next Right, submission. there will be that. Okay, so yeah. if, if I, I hope that will help at least in right. terms of, and again, obviously, I'll be writing for Digisuite tomorrow. <laughs> 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 I'm happy to let them play in the sandbox tomorrow, and I eagerly <laughs> wait to see what happens later. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm pretty much on that wavelength as well. Um, you know, I, I, I think we, when we start to get to the point where we feel like we're, like a workshop is breaking out, and we're we're trying to work with the applicant to work through these things in real time, then that's not productive for anyone, particularly when you have that set up for the next morning, so we won't be redundant. Um, I do appreciate some of the updates and, again, appreciate the public input. Um, you know, among the things I'll look forward to is uh, sort of um, where you're moving on buffering and addressing some of these grade differentials and sort of the, the visual impacts. Um, We've talked about landscaping, buffering, the, the Route 1 access. I'm glad to hear that you're sort of backing away from the, um, the, the sort of the three-lane solution, if you will. Um, stormwater low impact design. Um, I might suggest, um, and folks may know where I'm going on this, that this could be another op good opportunity for a site walk. Um, mm -hmm. On the one hand, it's a site that I think at one level we've, we all feel very familiar with because we've been looking at this as a board in various forms for quite a while. We go by it all the time, but um, really hasn't been cleared out for that long, and we're sort of entering that season where leaves are coming down, and we should be able to get a sense of, um, again, given that we're not, we realize we're not looking at what the final product will be, but just to get the lay of the land, literally. Um, I think we usually find that helpful, and especially when it comes to things like grade changes and view corridors and things like that. So um, as we typically do, I'll leave it to staff to sort of fill out the board on that in terms of availability and also neighbors and, and the applicant, of course. Um, and I would be hopeful that coming out of that and then um, building on what will hopefully be a productive session tomorrow morning that um, we'll all be in a better position to really dig into this and, and start moving toward more of a more of an action. So I think that's all I've got. Um, you can come on up and ask just sure one question. Thanks. On that uh, site walk, and do, uh, you're going to let us know? So We do typically, uh, and Jay can speak yeah. to it at, at more of an official level, but typically abutters are notified. Good. Um, okay. And there are certain protocols uh, yep. that we have to follow because it is a, we have enough of us together, it's sort of a, you well, know, I'm all the almost a meeting, but <laughs> we certainly <laughs> will notify folks. Yep. And I do just want to make note that um, 
so you folks probably received sort of official notification from the town about the meeting. Um, we send those out at the first time now that this item is being tabled tonight. You won't get another official notification. So um, just, again, we meet every three weeks. Our agendas are posted a week okay. before the meeting. So you can either check online or call our office. Um, but typically we don't do another public formal letter notification. So I just want to let folks know who are interested in following this project. That's now up to you to stay tuned. And, cust and customarily we do like to try to, when we do something like a site walk, we usually like to schedule it for a little bit before one of our Monday meetings, just to give you a sense. But um, And that's usually included as, as part of the, the agenda when that goes out in that case. But just stay tuned on that. Yep. Corey, I'd just like yes. to thank the landowners for being here and for, oh, yeah. for expressing sort of their, their concerns in a very constructive way. Absolutely. It was very constructive. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. All right. Do we have a town planner's report? Uh, do not have anything to report on this evening. Administrative amendment report. Yep, one, one item to report on, 626 U.S. Route 1, which is commonly, commonly known as the Roya Chiropractic Site. Uh, yep. Now Mary Maids is in there, just south of Dunstan Corner. Um, that's a mixed-use building. There's an office component and a residential component. So they're seeking what they were requesting or have received administrative approval for is to add a garage to the residential side of things. Because it's a mixed-use building, um, it required site plan approval, uh, and the chair and staff looked at it and felt that the, the addition itself was sort of de minimis in nature that it was uh, of the kind to be considered administratively, so that was okay. approved. And that it was specific to the residential use. Right. It wasn't, that was, yes, thank you. It wasn't, we made sure it wasn't part of the commercial activity. That wasn't increasing or expanding, so, yep. So that's, that's all I have. Thank you. Any planning board correspondence? Planning board comments? I have one comment. I will not be at the next meeting. I believe it's October 31st. It is. So, accordingly. I probably will not be ooh, at that ooh. meeting either. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh oh. Uh oh. You get down to that point. That's four. Uh -huh. <laughs> Stay tuned. Stay All right. Stay tuned. Well, got some lead time. Yep. So, <laughs> um, anything else? Any other comments? that, I'll move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.